Hello everybody, today I represent to you the question we've all been asking, who is the traitor in Telltale's Game of Thrones? Before you continue with this video, please be aware that the video is dark and full of spoilers. Now in episode 3 of Game of Thrones, after sneaking off to talk to Gwyn Whitehill, she reveals to Roderick that there is a traitor among the foresters in the small council. You have a traitor in your council. Someone who knows every detail of your circumstances. Just when you felt terrible, you felt even worse. Thanks Telltale for never letting us forget that we're in the world of Game of Thrones. When I first learned this, I immediately went into shock. Every secret and every plan to stop the Light Hills has been discussed with the entire council. And now we're all left scrambling to see who we can really trust. So today, I'm here to clear up that and to reveal the traitor. Before I begin my analysis though, I'm sure some of you are wondering if Gwyn is even a reliable source of information, but since she knew your attempt to attack Griffith to save Ryan as well as knowing about Asher, it's clear that somebody has handed the information over to the White Hills. In the small council is Duncan Tuttle, the Castellan of Ironrath, Sir Roland de Gore, the Master at Arms, Maestro Tangren, and finally Alyssa Forrester. First we'll start off with Alyssa. A lot of people would quickly throw her out of their inspection, though I'm sure Rob wouldn't have expected Catelyn to betray him and free Jaime Lannister either. So, just to be safe, we'll check her out. First of all, in the codex of the game, we can see that she has a past of losing a house already, and that she has silently sworn to never let that happen again. So that's in check, it seems that she's rooting for the home team, but as with Catelyn, what if one of her children were in danger? Ryan was taken hostage to High Point by Lord Whitecastle, so it's evident that she would want to do almost anything to save him. Begging Roderick to focus on freeing Ryan shows that her priorities aren't on the throat at home, so is it safe to say that she would also go so far as to sell information to the White House to protect her son? Obviously not. If you do choose to set out to free Ryan, Gwen tells you that Lud Whitehill already knew the plan, so that would contradict Alyssa's hopes of saving her youngest son. Also, the alliance of Lud Whitehill and Alyssa Forrester seems pretty unlikely considering that she wants all the Whitehills dead, and the feeling is mutual with Lud as well. If you have to murder every last Whitehill down to the babes in their beds, no matter what, you must do it. So considering that, I'm going to go ahead and say that Alyssa is not the traitor. Even though she has at times wanted you to submit to the White Hills, it's more likely her trying to protect her family than trying to betray you. Moms really just don't get it sometimes. I don't know. Maybe we should listen to her more often. Next on the list is Duncan. He comes from a simple life of working the farm with his brother, but soon grew out of that after gaining a friendship with Gregor Forrester. He was raised as Castellan and has done very well for many years. Tuttle is one of the only people who knows of the North Grove, which is quite possibly the only hope for the house. It's said to be a citadel and also to have large trees. When he meets Garrett at the wall, he asks him to desert the Night's Watch to find the North Grove since it is beyond the wall. The whole iron from eyes saying and the large trees is most likely hinting at ironwood trees beyond the wall. So we know Duncan is good at business. Obviously he was to maintain his farm so well and to become castellan of a noble house. But having control of these ironwood trees beyond the wall would mean the success of the forcers no matter what the outcome was at Ironrath. So even though he never seems to want to fight the White Hills head on, now we can see the reason for that since he knows of a place where they can continue to get ironwood trees and keep Ironrath secure. But what signs have we seen that he might have betrayed the foresters? Well, in episode 2, Lud Whitecastle tells Roderick that he will be seizing control of all the ironwood trees belonging to the foresters. Later in episode 3, we see Duncan taking ironwood shields to the wall, but how could he? The White Hills own all of the ironwood trees, so they obviously can't make more, and with the war threatening to begin at any moment, it seems a bit foolish to hand out what they already had in stock. But as Duncan said, his true reasons for going were to talk to Garrett to find the North Grove, which would eventually translate to more ironwood anyways, so I guess he's willing to take that risk. So in any case, it doesn't seem like he's a traitor. The worst he could do is never tell anybody about the North Grove and pocket the money selling the wood himself, but he still doesn't seem to show any signs of actually gain anything from being a traitor. Next we come to Maester Ortangren. He comes from the Vale and worked at the Citadel to earn his rings, though when he got them his hopes of becoming Maester in the area were crushed due to the murder of John Aaron. Because of that, the Citadel appointed him as Maester of Ironrath, where he so-called serves loyally. So when do we see our lovable Maester serving loyally? Well, as far as we've seen, he knows how to fix people up and does seem to provide some good advice. He's kind of like the one kid during a fight that goes, can't we all just be friends? He always asks enemies and allies alike to go for the more peaceful options, though what could be his gain in becoming a traitor? In the first episode, he said he saw the Ironwood Trees as gold, and made it clear that he wanted to sell them to the White Hills. Perhaps he's trying to appease the White Hills and selling them information in order to keep some of the forest around. The wood may be black, but I see gold. An entire forest of gold. Why not give some of our Ironwood to House Bolton and have them leave us be? Or selling information to the White Hills to get a shared profit from the Ironwood Trees. So it seems his only gain in becoming a traitor would be for the money, but he also seems to care for the forces too. He obviously doesn't ever want them to get hurt, and maybe he is only a traitor to try and keep them alive. 
Also, Telltale seems to like a bigger wow factor than what a traitor Mace or Tangren would bring around. That, it would just be too obvious. Everyone would expect it. Finally, we have Sir Rowan de Gore. Rowan was not originally with the Foresters and joined them after Balon Greyjoy's rebellion. He helped in the attack on Pike and was knighted by King Robert Baratheon. After that, he took his military tactics and skills at the training yards of Ironrath. So him originally not being a Forester should give us a bit of concern and the fact that he's a bit crazy, but what can we really pin on him that would mark him as a traitor? Well, to start, he thinks very little of Lord Ethan, though many people do considering that Ethan never was strong or good at fighting like his brothers, and he's a bit young to take on so many responsibilities at such a hard time. So I'll let that slide, but he also didn't stand by Ethan's side when he was killed by Ramsay Bolton, but that's only if he wasn't your sentinel, the same applies to Duncan if you didn't choose him as sentinel. So you can hardly blame him for that either. The rest of the game he's loyal, does as commanded, and he's ready to take on any fight against the White Hills. Perhaps too ready. Attacking the White Hills and Ironrath, especially killing Griff, would mean that Ryan would be killed. It was in succession to being Lord if Roderick dies. Losing a fourthborn son probably wouldn't mean too much to Lud White Hill. Sending him to the forest is clearly dangerous. And even Gwen says that her father is doing his best to start a war. My father is just waiting for an excuse to attack. Why do you think he sent my brother? So, let's see what would happen if Roiland did kill Griff. Ryan would get killed, and Roderick is disposed while he can't defend himself. He keeps no guards on him, and if he ever needs a sword around, he usually relies on Roiland. Then, if he dies, the rule of the house would go to Duncan, or him. Roiland's men would obviously choose him, and Duncan seems to only have friends among the foresters themselves. None of the soldiers are small folk. Also, with war threatening, choosing the Master of Arms seems an obvious choice for a lord. So, there's his gain in killing Griff. If he is the traitor, or even if he isn't, he would essentially become the new Lord of Ironrath, and with the White Hills as his allies, he wouldn't have trouble with them anymore. However, he did try to attack Ramsay for killing Ethan, and has made almost every attempt to keep enemies out from the inside walls of Ironrath, but even so, he has the most to gain from an alliance with the White Hills. So there you have it. My suspect is Sir Roland de Gore. Agree with me? Disagree with me? Let me know and I'll try my best to respond to you from what I've learned. But first, I'm going to bed. I've been up way too long trying to figure this out, and I might just kill myself if I'm wrong about this. I hope I've helped you guys out, and if you want to know my opinions about who the spies in King's Landing are, who Lud Whitehill is paying there, and what's going on with Mira, then let me know and I'll do my best to make a video on it. Thanks, and have a good day.